I want to give a little broader perspective on the future in general and the future of operating systems. Making predictions is, of course, a dangerous business. This quote is often attributed to different people. It's sometimes attributed to Niels Bohr, but neither Casey Stengel or Niels Bohr was actually the first one to say it. The first version of this quote, we believe, is this one. I don't know if anyone speaks Danish well enough to pronounce that, but of course we can use our translators and translate it. And this was one of the ones that a pretty small fraction of you said that you conducted business in a language you don't understand. And I think that's probably mostly because most of you have not conducted much business in any language yet. Automatic translation does pretty well on this. Um, both Google and Bing end up with quotes that may not be quite as poetic as the attributed translations, but are really getting the whole concept very well. If we want to make predictions and think about the future, the only way to do that with any hope of not embarrassing yourself is to look at big trends from the past. That's what we're going to do today. We'll look at how things have changed the last 50 years or so and try to think about what that means for the future. And I'll make a few concrete predictions, but they'll all be big enough that if you remember them 15 years from now, well, I'll be happy if you remember them, even if they're completely wrong. The 1964 World's Fair was 50 years ago. This was a follow-up to the 1939 World's Fair. One of the things that came out of this was this article that Isaac Asimov wrote. He wrote about what it would be like to visit the World's Fair today, in 2014. And it's actually a really remarkable essay. In 64, the world was in a pretty dangerous place, so he had to sort of rule out that there would be a thermonuclear war that would destroy everything going forward 50 years. And we seem to have survived that, more or less. And then you could go on to making some predictions. And we'll look at some of Asimov's predictions as we go through the class today. But we also want to look at the ones that you saw in the AT&T commercial. One of the ones in Asimov's essay, which is remarkably prescient, is the state of self-driving cars in 2014. He was pretty much right on target that a lot of people would be working on them in 2014. They probably wouldn't be widespread on the public roads, but they would be things people who would go to a fair looking at the future would see in 2014 and be excited about. So that is pretty much spot on with, with the reality. The video clips you looked at were these commercials that AT&T did 20 years ago. I will show a brief clip from them now to remind people. Have you ever borrowed a book from thousands of miles away? Across the country. Just ahead. Take next exit. Without stopping for directions. Or sent someone a fax. From the beach, you will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Have you ever paid a toll without slowing down? Bought concert tickets from cash machines. Or tucked your baby in from a phone booth. I think they're interesting in a couple perspectives, and many of you wrote comments about this, that a lot of their technology predictions were actually pretty good. The predictions about how the culture around that would change are really bad. Right? The thought that you would be going in the phone booth once you've got a device that you can use on your wrist to make a phone call is kind of strange and ironic. And faxes we have pretty much done away with. How many of you have actually had to send a fax? Okay, so people still have to send faxes. It's it's getting less and less common to have to send faxes. Hopefully, it will completely disappear within a year or two. So I've broken down the things in the commercials that you saw into a few different categories. Not that precise how to interpret the different things that they talked about. I do really like the background music, so it's very, it still sounds fairly trendy and uplifting in 2014, I think. Maybe, maybe I'm... Uh, my musical tastes are questionable, but I like it. These are the results that you submitted. Many of these things, almost all of you are doing, you know, the watching movies, the learning special things from far away. Some of the no answers to these probably are due to interpreting these things very literally, because I think all of you are doing 
these. And if you watch the video, you well, I don't know whether it was the movie you wanted, but you watched some video the minute you wanted to. That probably should be 100%, and some of the others should be. Some of the ones are pretty low, like the language. I think that's more due to not many of you conducting business in any language rather than not having good enough automatic translation. I've certainly conducted business many times in languages that I don't understand, and I haven't been harmed by it yet. So I think it's definitely not uncommon today. We're going to look at some of these in more detail. Before that, I want to look at last semester's class did essentially the same thing. You can see their results as well. The, the second result is from last semester. They're mostly pretty consistent. The one that's really strangely different is the baby in a phone booth. And I think that was because there was a comment sort of asking how literally we should interpret these. I think most of you probably do not have babies. And the quote was literally your baby from a phone booth. And I don't think anyone has actually used a phone booth in many years. Talking to someone over Skype is what it really means versus tucking your actual baby in. Most of these we're doing pretty well on. Before getting into making fun of the predictions, we need to give credit to AT&T for what they actually did that was good. The first prediction I'm going to make is that compared to what AT&T Bell Labs did in the five years following World War II, there's nothing that's going to come out of any of the major companies' research labs in the 40-year period that that covers that will have anywhere near the impact the things that Bell Labs was able to do in just four or five years. Things that came out of Bell Labs during that time were the transistor, which certainly has had huge impact on creating our modern economy and creating all the computing devices that we use and that work fast and reliable enough instead of being using vacuum tubes. Also, Claude Shannon was there working on information theory and created the foundation of both information theory and cryptography. And the whole idea for cellular networks was also developed there. In terms of what Bell Labs contributed to the world, there's no one doing stuff like that in industry research labs today. The closest is probably Microsoft that does have a very academic focused research lab, but they and all of those other research labs are mostly working on things about five years out. Nothing as big and bold as inventing the transistor, although I guess you can only do that once. So that's my, my first prediction, which I feel pretty confident about, although it'd be great if something does happen that has as much impact as those things did. 